Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I am back with the cut sheets that I actually prepared from that roll of Red River San Gabriel 1.0 paper. Remember, those rolls that were being sold for $39 were wound backwards at the factory. So it imparted this horrific counter curl which does not like working with the PA-100. Let me show you. These are literally scrapes from the printhead. You can see the emulsion, which is Burrita, all most of the time a very, very fragile type of uh, coating. As you can see, it was being totally scraped off and unacceptable. So I took it off and I proceeded to cut some sheets on my rotor trim. I have some 12 by 17 here, a couple of smaller odd sizes that I had from leftover and then some 17 by 24s here and I'm going to let them sit and sort of relax. I actually got some of the 12 by 17 to relax to the point where I was able to print it on the Pro 1. I proceeded to do a profile. Now I'm going to show you that next. Okay I'm back sitting down. I just finished printing some San Gabriel 1.0 prints on my Pro 1 using OEM inks. I did a profile with the Color Monkey photo for it just a while ago. But first I want to show you what happened to my hand. I have scrapes everywhere. I have a nice paper cut. That hurt like hell. That's quite a deep little cut right there. Bled all over the center portion of the roll as I was winding it onto a secondary roll to at least try to counter curl the uh, hideous curl that the, the paper had. But nevertheless, I managed to cut some 12 by 17 sheets and print them on the Pro 1. This is a painterly representation of a sunset with a lighthouse. This is not my image. I downloaded this from a free download site for images and went ahead and produced a painterly effect and as you can see it is perfect even all the way across. I heard some noises as the head was traversing back and forth probably hitting the edge a little bit but I used the um, reduce abrasion setting on the driver and again I'm just going to have to let this paper sit Hopefully it will relax as it acclimates itself to uh, ambient humidity levels. But yeah, I'm very satisfied with this. So at least for now, you know, I hope to be able to print some 17 by 24s on the Pro 1 or the Pro 3800. One of those two, I'll try to uh, make it work on that. The results should be great. If only I could keep it from buckling. And again, I read a while ago about that buckling problem. And uh, people were buying the pre-cut sheets, 17 by 22 from Red River, and they were experiencing buckling. So they tried to extend the drying period between head passes, and that tend to alleviate it a little bit. But... Uh, you could imagine it would take you an hour to print a 13 by 19 or let alone a 17 by 22, probably a couple of hours. But, you know, if time is not an issue and if that solves the problem, then by all means, go ahead and do so. All right, so I decided to test the neutrality of the profile I just made by printing a black and white of this image. This is an RGB image, and as you can see, it's perfectly neutral and linear. It is gorgeous. I love the effect of the chroma optimizer on this particular paper. Just lovely. Anything that you may have seen earlier was done on the Pro 100. And the Pro 100 can barely handle this paper thickness. So I think if I go back to attempt to print it on that in the future, I'm going to go ahead and load it from the manual feeder. Here is a color but purposely processed a little bit dull as far as saturation goes and 
to be made a little bit more dramatic, the sky was fabulous that day. This is our state house in Maryland, Annapolis, Maryland. And uh, I shot this a long time ago with my only, I think it was a 6.3 megapixel um, Minolta Dimage camera. And it did a pretty good job. It doesn't quite hold up to this level of enlargement though. But still a pleasing image and uh, one that would be probably make a good postcard. All right, so as you may be able to see, it's working very, very well with the Pro 1. So although initially I felt really, really dejected that I had bought that paper and it was not working with the printer that I originally intended to use it on as, you know, as a roll uh, material. No, that's not working. And again, the buckling may have nothing to do with the printer, but everything to do with the fact that as someone already reported, the paper for some reason just buckles. And so I'll have to come up with some other solution for this. I'm going to try it on the Pro 3880 and see what happens. We'll see what happens there. All right. Very quick video. I just wanted to report my initial reports with this. I still have another box unopened, another roll down here on the floor unopened. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to at least use it as sheets. So that's about it for now. We hit over 5450 subscribers. That is fabulous. Now, just a little, a little, not a complaint, but just a suggestion. And it, this will help me immensely. A lot of people have been posting comments on videos that have nothing to do with the comment. Here's what you should do. And at least it will really help me out tremendously. I have over 600 and almost 50 videos. That's 650 videos. So I have gone ahead, spent some time categorizing them into playlists. If you click on my name, okay, look at any of my videos, but click on my name, it will take you to my main page and right there are all my playlists. So look up, if you have a question about loading ink on a, or refilling a Pro 100, for instance, look for the Pro 100 playlist. In fact, there are specific videos in that. Click on one of those videos. You don't have to watch it. Just post a comment there. That way I know instantly that instead of a, uh, posting a comment about, you know, filling the Pro 100 CLI 42 carts, I see it next to a video that I did, for example, on the expiration date of cartridges. Nothing to do with that. And I have to then search to see what video are you actually pertaining to, because often that little bit of information is left out. But I didn't mean that to be a complaint. I just, you know, would suggest to you guys to spend a little extra time and at least look for the video. That way I keep everything categorized. And then people that are reading the, the comments other folks are writing and also my replies to those comments can also relate to that particular video. And if they want to watch it, they can go ahead and watch it. If not, that's fine as well. But it'll just make life a lot easier for me. I'm going nuts trying to find you know, what video are you asking about? You know, because often you leave that out. But that's okay. Anyway, thank you. I'm not complaining about the fact that everybody is posting questions. I love that. Just a little extra effort and then, you know, pair it up to a pertinent video. That would help a lot. It will help me and it will help everybody else who's reading that as well. So thank you once again. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Until the next time, and by the way, I'm going to do a video. Somebody asked about the roll settings on the P800. No, though it was sort of a failure with this particular paper. I'm going to go ahead and, and go through the actual settings because somebody was very confused about those. So I will be doing a computer video on that subject next after this. All right. Thank you once again. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.